So you bought a bunch of solar panels and now you gotta figure out whether to put them in series or in parallel or in series parallel. And that's something I wanna talk about today and I will tell you why my solar panels on the roof of my cabin are in series parallel. So first of all, series means that the positive terminal on one solar panel, or battery by the way, is connected to the negative terminal on the next and so on down the line. So if you have, for example, three solar panels and you wanna run them in series, you would go positive to negative, positive to negative, and then on the far side, positive, and the near side, negative, you would run to your breaker box or whatever it is you're gonna run them to. And it really should be some kind of breaker box, usually something called a combiner box. If they're in parallel, then you run positive to positive, negative to negative, and then positive and negative back to the breaker box. When you run something in series, the voltage increases by the number of panels. So if you have three 20 volt panels, then your voltage will become 60 volts, but your amperage will stay the same. If you run your panels in parallel, then your voltage will stay the same. So if you have three 20 volt panels, they will still be 20 volts at the end, but your amperage will then go up. So for example, if you have 20 volt 10 amp panels and you put three of them in series, then you would have 60 volts at 10 amps or 600 watts. If you put your panels in parallel, those same three panels, you'd still have 20 volts, but since you put them in parallel, then you would have three times 10 amps or 30 amps. 30 times 20 equals 600. So your wattage will remain the same regardless of whether they're in series or in parallel. Now, what series parallel means is where you're going to have a certain number of panels in series and a certain number of those series arrays in parallel. So for example, on the roof of my cabin, I have six solar panels. They are in series parallel configuration. The first two panels are run in series, so positive to negative. And then the negative terminal and the positive terminals are run through the MC4 cables back to the breaker box, which is a combiner box, and you'll see why shortly. The next two panels are also in series, and as well as the third set. And they all run back to the combiner box to their own breakers, and at the combiner box, those three series arrays of solar panels, because each one is essentially an array, gets combined in parallel so that they run back to the charge controller. Now, if I've lost you, let's go through it. Those panels are 305 watt panels, and they run at about 35.9 volts and around eight and a half amps. So if you do the math, 305 divided by 35.9 gives you like 8.495 or something like that. Close enough to 8.5 amps. If I put them in series parallel like this, that means that I'm gonna have approximately 76 volts per pair of panels but still only have the eight and a half amps. And when I combine them in the combiner box, I'm actually gonna still have 76 volts because each of those pairs of panels is now going to go in parallel with one another, so the voltage isn't gonna go up, but the amperage is. And I'm gonna take that eight and a half amps and multiply that by three, which is gonna give me 25 and a half amps. So now I've got 76 volts, 25 and a half amps off of that big array. So why did I do that? Well. I chose the Outback FlexMax 80 charge controller. Now at the time when I put that charge controller in, I chose the Outback FlexMax 80 because I knew other guys that were using it and it was a great charge controller. Frankly, it has been a great charge controller. And I think even today, if you could get one, I'm not sure if they're still made, but if you can, those are good charge controllers. That charge controller has a maximum voltage rating of 150 volts. So you might think, okay, well, if it's 150 volts, why didn't you run three panels in series instead of two? And here, folks, is the key to why I did what I did and why you should consider this too. When you take three of those panels at 36 volts per panel, that is essentially what you can call your operating voltage, max power voltage, but that is not your open voltage nor the total potential of voltage off those panels, and this, folks, is very important. They might be rated at max power at 35.9 volts, but they can produce more than that, and in fact, they're quite capable of producing considerably more. 
If I were to put three of those panels in series, I would get a max power or operating voltage of 108 volts. And if you add 25% to that, which is about 27 volts, that gets you up to 135 volts, which is very, very close to the maximum 150 volts for that charge controller. And I know there's a lot of talk out there by people that do something called over paneling. Personally, not a chance in you know where that I would do that. And after a discussion with Outback, they agreed with me that it wasn't really a good idea. Yes, I was going to come in under that 150 volts, but the chance that I was going to bump too close to that 150 volt range was an issue. Plus, there's another reason. And that reason is the efficiency of the step-down DC converter. Because essentially, what an MPPT charge controller does is it takes the incoming voltage and then steps it down to the battery voltage. And this charge controller is most efficient when 60 volts is coming in and it has to step it down for a 48 volt battery system. Well, if I were to go 123 volts or 108 volts, for a 24 volt battery system, then I'm widening that gap, which means it's going to be less efficient. So by keeping my solar array voltage to approximately 72 volts under normal operating conditions, that's a little bit closer to that 24 volt battery bank, which is gonna charge up, for example, a LifePo 4 battery bank is gonna charge up at 29 volts. So 29 volts to 72 volts, that's closer than 123 to 29, you see? So you're going to be a little more efficient by not pushing your voltage to the max, and you're gonna prevent smoke in your charge controller. Now, in a poll recently, somebody was debating with me when I said you really can't have too much solar, and they were kind of trying to think of things a little differently. One, they said something about an inverter and how their inver inverter couldn't take it. And I said, well, an inverter doesn't really care. And that's true. But the problem is they were calling something an inverter that's not an inverter. It has an inverter as part of it, but it's an all-in-one system. And all-in-one systems are not inverters. So one thing that's very important in this community, the do-it-yourself solar community, is you get your nomenclature right. An inverter does nothing more than take DC power and convert it to the appropriate AC power. That's all the inverter does, and it really doesn't care how many, you could put a world's worth of solar panels at your cabin, and that inverter could care less. As long as you don't smoke the battery bank by trying to send 100 volts to it, but if you build your system appropriately, the inverter could care less how much solar you put in. What matters is actually your charge controller or charge controllers. You really need to keep your voltage well below the maximum rating of your charge controller. If you push the limits of your charge controller, yeah, well, it can let the smoke out. And when I paid five, $600 for my FlexMax 80, I wasn't really interested in finding out what voltage would let the smoke out. <laughs> I, I don't need that problem. I can't afford to buy another one. I don't know about you, but I'm not rich and I wasn't rich. I'm retired now, but you know what? I wasn't retired then and I still wasn't rich and I had a good job. I could just throw $600 away. So I put my solar array in series parallel for a few reasons though, not just voltage. So number one was keeping the solar array below the maximum voltage for my Outback charge controller. Number two, was to keep the amperage well below what my 10 gauge cables rated for that goes back to that charge controller. And that's something else you have to consider. If you crank your amperage up, because you could say, well, Eric, you have a 24 volt battery bank, wouldn't it be more efficient to send 36 volts to the charge controller for it? Well, it actually it'd be probably more efficient for sure. But I'd have to put my panels in parallel and six solar panels in parallel at eight and a half amps per solar panel means a whole lot of amps, like over 50, going to that charge controller. And it can handle it because it has a max of 80 amps, but there's something else you gotta consider and that's the size of the conductor. You can't run 50 amps over 10 gauge cable, not unless you wanna use it to cook something or let the smoke out of the cable. 
So you're gonna have to run big cable. I'd have to look up the charts, but I'm not even sure eight gauge cable would be big enough for that 50 amps, especially over a longer run. So I'm looking at what, six gauge? Spendy. So if I can keep it under 30 amps, then I can run it over 10 gauge wire. So now, Parallel means my amps are too high. I got to spend more money on cables and breakers because now you're talking a lot more amps. Or if I run series, the voltage is too high for the charge controller under the perfect conditions. Minus 40 clear skies might nuke my charge controller. So what do I do? I go series parallel. Two panels in series, three sets of panels in parallel. So it gives me about 72 volts and 25 amps. But there's one more reason why running them in series parallel benefits me quite a bit. That folks is panel shading. If you run your panels in series or you run them in parallel and some of the panels get shaded, well, basically you lose the array until the shade's gone. But if you're running a series parallel configuration and say one of the two panels I have in series gets shaded and that array essentially gets shut down, well, the other two are still working. So I might be getting maximum power off the other four panels and just not off that one set versus losing power off of all of them. So the benefit of running my panels in series parallel, actually, there's a few of them. I mean, I, it benefits me voltage-wise on protecting my charge controller. It benefits me amperage-wise on my cabling and breakers. And it benefits me from shading on a, one or two panels throughout the array. Works out for a great system. So there you have it, folks. That's why I put that solar array in series parallel. And I hope it helps somebody else out in trying to decide what they should do. Pay attention to that charge controller, conductor size, breakers, and you better be running breakers. And consider putting your arrays in series parallel if the conditions are like mine, because you might find it really benefits you. Meanwhile, I'll drop another video right here for you to check out. And thanks to my members, really helps the channel out. Y'all have a great day. The old jar hit out.